Hi, welcome back. I'm Connie from Let's Go Crafting and today we're going to make a little spool knitted snail. Join me as I let you know what you will need for this project. So in order to make your little snail, you need to have a spool knitter. You can buy spool knitters in the store, but today we're going to learn how to make one. So you will need a toilet paper roll, empty of your toilet paper. You will need masking tape, little these little nails, any nails will do, um, toothpicks will do, skewers that you've cut will do. I'm gonna use these nails because I have them. You will need your paper scissors, your fabric scissors, a yarn needle, and a little bit of yarn, and then some googly eyes. Join me as I show you how to make your spool knitter in just a minute. So the first thing you'll do with your toilet paper roll is you're going to use your paper scissors. We always want to use our paper scissors if we're cutting anything that is not fabric or yarn or thread. If we were to use our fabric scissors on cardboard and paper, it makes them really dull and then they don't work as well on our fabric. So the first thing we'll do is just cut a straight line up the side of our toilet paper roll. So it's like that. Now you're going to need your masking tape. You can use cellophane tape, you can use duct tape, you can use anything you want. I'm going to use masking tape because I have some. And I'm going to get a little piece off first because I'm going to need to use this to hold my um, toilet paper roll together. So I'm taking off just a little bit of the tape. I'm going to set it right here. Then I'm going to use, take my toilet paper roll and I'm just going to make a smaller circle. And that's all there is to it. You just kind of push it around in on itself and you make a smaller circle like that. Then you want to hang on to it because you don't want it to come unrolled and you use a little bit of your masking tape to hold it closed. Now I'm going to put some more tape here and some more tape here and that will hold it closed nicely and then we're going to add some more tape all the way around. Here's some tape at the bottom to hold the bottom together and some tape in the middle. Now the spool knitter that I showed at the beginning of this video, this one, has tape all the way around. Um, I did that because I like the color. In order for it to work, it doesn't have to look like this. Okay, so we're just going to move on to the next part. If you want to decorate your spool knitter, you can do that any way you want. You can use any color of tape, you can draw on it and make it, you know, super cute, whatever you'd like. But for today, I'm just going to show how to make a simple spool knitter and then how to start your spool knitting. Okay, so now I have my, my little half made spool knitter. And I'm going to get out these little nails. Now these nails are slightly thicker than the ones I used here. So I'm only going to, instead of putting two, I'm only going to put one. If you want to use anything else, just you can use anything you want. So first I'm going to start right where my seam is and I'm going to leave a little bit of the nail up and I'm going to hold it against my spool. I'm going to take a piece of the tape and I'm going to tape it down. I'm going to use my finger to really push down that tape 
around my nail. Okay. I'm going to cut off a couple more pieces of the tape just so I don't have to play with the spool of tape while I'm doing it. So we want to make sure that the next one comes straight across and is about the same height above the edge of your spool knitter. Your toilet paper roll. And then we tape that one in place as well. And then the next two will go halfway between these on this side and halfway between these on this side. If it's not exact, it's not a problem. And then I'm going to put the last one on. The last step of this process, you want your nails to stay in place uh, without moving around. Um, one of the ways to do that is to add another big piece of tape down near the bottom and you just go all the way around your toilet paper roll, making sure you get the tape tight on each side of the little nail or toothpick or whatever you've chosen. So now they're on, but now I wanna make sure they don't move sideways. So I get a little bit more tape and I'm gonna rip off a little bit like that and you just reinforce in between. So you put that little piece in between each of these nails so that they don't move back and forth. And this piece was a little too big, but I'm just gonna fold it over and get it in there. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as you have some tape there. And now, after this last piece of tape, your spool knitter is complete. I will be back in just a minute to show you how to use your spool knitter. Okay, now we've got our spool knitters complete. Now we need to know how to use them. First, you'll get your little ball of yarn. You don't need a whole lot. I'm just using some leftovers from a different project. And you're gonna, set, you're gonna lay out a little bit of string. Now, if you already know how to make a slip knot, go ahead and do that. If you don't, I'm gonna show you right now how to do that. You're gonna lay your thread, your yarn, right in front of you with the end to the left side and the ball to the right side. You're gonna take up the yarn that's closest to your ball of yarn, your working yarn, and you're going to make a little circle so that it comes around and goes over the part that you're in, that, that's the end, just like that. The next step will be to take this part that's coming over your end and that attaches to your working yarn, and you're gonna push that underneath this part and into your circle like that okay so it came into your circle then you're going to grab the one that's in your circle and you're going to pull and there's your slip knot it's called a slip knot because you can adjust your loop and that's what we need the end of your yarn should be at least as long as your spool knitter that will make it much easier for you um, to pull and you'll see how that works. All right, let's get started on our spool knitting. So we take the end of our yarn and we just push it into our spool knitter and it's gonna come out to the bottom. And we're gonna set this loop onto one of our nails. And we're gonna make our slip knot so that it's 
not tight, but that it will stay on. Okay, one way to get it to stay on is to pull down on your bottom string. With the yarn that's at your yarn ball, you want to come, you want to go to the next nail and wrap around. We always go to the inside of the nail, not the outside, not like that. From the inside and wrap around, making sure it's not too tight. Then you come through the center, around the next one, through the center, and around the last nail. Now you should have, all four nails should have one loop of yarn on them. Okay, now we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go through the center, so around the inside of our nail, come around the outside and go into the center, around the outside and into the center, around the outside and into the center, and then one more time. Now we have two loops on every single nail, okay? The easiest way to do this is the last loop that you wrapped around. We're gonna take the bottom loop and pull it out a little and bring it over the top of the top of the nail and the top loop. So now we only have one loop on. We go to the next one. We take the bottom loop. And sometimes you have to hold the top loop with your other finger. Pull it over the nail and let it go. If it's flopping up like that, reach down to the bottom and pull down. You turn it, take the bottom loop, over the top loop and over the nail, bottom loop, and if you notice, I'm pulling it out. When you pull it out, you have extra room to lift up over the nail and over your last stitch. And now to make it nice and neat, I'm gonna reach down to the bottom tail and pull tight. Now, all my loops are again at the bottom of my nails. I have my working yarn. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the exact same thing where I take it from where the last stitch, come through the middle of my spool knitter, around the outside, through the center, around the outside, through the center, around the outside, through the center, and around the outside. And now, once again, I have two loops on every nail. And I'm gonna pull the bottom loop over the top loop and over the top of my nail. And I do that to all four again. And you're gonna keep doing this and keep doing this until your spool knitted piece comes out the bottom and measures about eight inches. So look in here, you can see that this tail is pulling on something. What it's pulling on is the cording that's being made. Now I'm pulling down and then I let go and I turn it back up and I keep doing that same thing around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, and then lifting the bottom over. I'm gonna keep doing that until my cord measures approximately eight inches. And to measure the eight inches, you put the top of your ruler here at the top of the spool knitter, and you'll measure down. And it's about maybe two and a half inches beyond the end of your spool knitter. All right, I'm gonna join you as soon as I have my eight inches of cording complete. All right, here I am back. I have to laugh because the uh, distance between the last video and splicing on this new video makes it seem like I did, I made my cording in about a second and a half. 
which is absolutely incorrect. It probably took me exactly the same amount of time as you. But here we are. This is what it looks like. I have measured, and this time I'm using just one of my sewing measuring tapes. I put the edge of my um, measuring device, this is a measuring tape, at the top of my spool knitter, and I measure down. And you can see that I've done just about eight inches of cording. And that's exactly what you want. Okay, once yours is this length, then you're at this step. So let's set this aside. Now I went ahead and I cut my yarn. You want a length of yarn that's, I don't know, this is probably 12 inches long. You're gonna need it not only to get your the cording off of your spool knitter, but you're gonna also need it to sew your snail together. And I'm gonna show you right now how to do that. So in this case, you'll need a yarn needle. Yarn needles are blunt on one end and they have a bigger eye than a regular sewing needle. So we're gonna put the yarn into our yarn needle. Um, you know, I have a lot of trouble getting the yarn to come into the needle just like that. Uh, what I tend to do is I fold the end over so it looks like that and then I just push it together so there's a fold right there and then the fold fits through the eye of the needle easier and that's just how I do it it's easier for me so I'm gonna take my needle and this thread I'm looking at my spool knitter and I can see that my thread my yarn is coming out of this stitch so I don't want to put my needle in this stitch first. I want to come over to the right and do that stitch first. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up from the bottom right next to the nail like that. And I'm going to pull the stitch off of the nail and now it's on my needle and my thread. I'm going to rotate my spool knitter to the next one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick my needle underneath the stitch, come out through the center right next to my nail, and pull it off of my nail. You don't want to pull your stitches off first because they'll have a tendency to then disappear down into your cord. So we want to do it at the same time. So we stick our needle into the stitch. Once the needle, once the stitch is on your needle and your yarn, then you pull it off of your nail. And here we are at the last one. We do the same thing. We stick the needle into the stitch, pull it off our needle, just like that. And then your cord is free. The top of your cord looks like that. And we pull it tight. And there you go. That's the end of your cord and it's all knotted. Uh, if we were not going to be sewing um, our snail, we would have to add a knot because if we cut here, it all comes undone. So the next step is going to be to kind of roll this up so he looks like a little snail shell. So like that, okay? But right now it won't stay. So we're gonna take our end and push it against the rest of the cord and mine thread seems to be coming out of the other side. So I'm going to turn him over so that the thread is coming out, is on top of where I'm going to be sewing. So I'm going to put it right next to it. I'm going to take my 
needle and you can see there's these little stitches. They look like little arrows. I'm just going to go into one of them over there and I'm going to pull and it pulls my, it pulls it tight and it's the start of your spiral. Then I'm going to just roll it a little bit until the next. So here's, here's our, our knot at the end. I went into this stitch. Now I'm going to roll the, here's the knot, here's the next stitch that's available. Oopsie. I'm going to take the next stitch available and go into the, this is the stitch on the spiral. This is the stitch on my cording. And I'm going to sew that together, just like that. And I'm going to keep rolling and keep sewing. So now I'm going to say, okay, I went in that stitch. The next stitch that I, and I sewed that one, the next stitch I need to sew is this one. And it matches up with this one on the cord. So I'm just going to go in under that stitch and then under this one on my coil, like that. Then I know that I did this stitch. I can see that this stitch is next. And it goes, here's the coil, it goes under that stitch. Now if you notice, I'm going from the spiral to the cord. Now that my yarn is coming out of the cord, I go from the cord into the spiral. And here's my next stitch on my spiral. So I'm coming from the cord into the spiral. And now my thread is coming out of the spiral. Here's my next spiral stitch. And here's my next cord stitch. All right, so we're gonna, I'll join you in just a second. We're gonna keep sewing in that way until your shell is as big as you want. And then he has a little head and a neck. I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so now we're back. We've got our spiral snail shells all sewn together. And let's look at the right. This is the wrong side. See how bumpy and lumpy? Here's the right side. It just really looks like a nice spiral. Um, I want you to remember that I've been doing this type of thing for more than 50 years. I learned this specific craft from my grandmother. She lived with us. So if yours does not turn out quite like that, it doesn't matter. It's a snail, and all snails are different. Okay, so I'm done sewing, and now I have to do something with this thread. I have to kind of knot it off. So I'm going to, here's where it's coming out of the thread on my spiral. I'm just going to go closer to the center of the spiral, just underneath a couple of threads, a couple of pieces of yarn. Pull it a little tight, and then I'm going to go under that last, it, it's coming out from right here, I'm going to go back and go under that again. And now I have a loop of yarn, so I'm going to go into the loop one time, don't pull tight, I'm going to come around again, and go in a second time from the same direction. So if I went from front to back the first time, I'm going to go front to back the second time. And then I'm going to pull tight while pushing down. And there's my knot. It's right at the back. It lays pretty flush. This extra yarn here, if you cut it, if you cut your yarn right there, your knot will eventually come undone. So you do something called weaving to get to weave your ends in. You go right next to your knot, and you just go under a few of your stitches. Um, you know, I like to do several. I like to do maybe a total of an inch or so. So I'm coming out here. I think I'm gonna go in over here. It, it doesn't matter. Just give yourself a little bit of space where your threads are woven in. Then you can take your fabric scissors and you can cut that off. Two more steps and then we're done. So here's what your snail looks like. He kind of has this funky little thing hanging out here. 
So let's see how to get rid of that. So one more time, we're gonna have to thread our yarn needle. I'm gonna bend the end so that I have a crease. Just bend it and smoosh it really tight so you have a crease. And then I'm gonna stick that crease into the eye of the needle and it just makes it so much easier. This end is super easy to deal with. Remember your cord is hollow. So as we were going around the edge of the spool knitter on those um, nails, if you noticed there was a hollow tube come. So the whole, your whole cord is hollow. What, why that makes it easy is you just stick your yarn needle into your tube with the end and it comes out somewhere else down, you know, here, what are we here? About maybe two inches, an inch and a half. And you just pull. You pull until all of that stuff disappears. And now all we need to do is cut it off. And that end is totally dealt with. And he looks so cute. All right, our last step, let's give our little guy some eyeballs. So I'm using googly eyes. I have to say, I love, love, love googly eyes. Um, it's just one of those things. You can use felt, you can use small buttons, um, you can use just about anything. I'm using here some Elmer's Gel school glue. It's because I have it. Um, you can also use regular white glue. Um, almost anything works. I The one thing I know that does not work is super glue. Super glue just doesn't work very well with fabric and yarn. So I'm going to put a little dot of glue. And I'm going to make it maybe a bigger glop of glue just so the eye doesn't fall off. And I'm gonna put my eye right onto that glop. Now, you can see I have a little bit on the edges that has kind of oozed out. Don't worry about that. Your glue will dry clear and then you're done. It won't, it's not gonna fall off. You're not gonna see your extra glue. I'm gonna put some more glue on this side. my other googly eye over there and now our snail is done we can make a whole family of snails try it out and have some fun see you next time